John Lundholm from 343, and welcome to our Artist Talks series, where we dive a bit deeper with some of our excellent and talented artists. Today we have Andre San, who's uh, brought us an exceptional piece, which we will be releasing shortly. It's it's pretty unique, uh, and we're really excited about it. So this has been uh, um, really fun to see this develop over the past couple of weeks, and welcome to the conversation. I'm looking forward to getting this out to the uh, getting this out to folks to have them take a look at it. So we wanted to connect with you just today for a quick bit of conversation to learn a bit more about you, a bit about your background, um, and a bit about your perspectives on art and uh, what you're bringing to the world and how you're what you think of your voice and what you hope people to take away from your work. So just starting right from the top, talk to me a bit about your background. Uh, you have come from a pretty mixed, uh, a, a pretty varied and, and extensive background in creative enterprises. Um, how do you feel that that has helped develop you into the artist you are today and the various pieces that you plug together into uh, your creation now? Well, first of all, I'm happy to be here with you, John, and um, it's a great pleasure to be part of this project. And um, yeah, this is a, a very beautiful question that always brings me back to the starting point, which is always the thing that I'm in pursuit of. So yeah, my, my history starts with, uh, I think, pretty much building blocks out of wood when I was a kid. And it got me that, um, that feeling of something that wasn't there, and now it's there like having the whole process of visualizing something and then kind of like a dream coming true. And um, I started off with uh, photography. That was the first bit. And then I started getting gigs as, a, as an actor in ads and uh, TV shows and uh, all sorts of um, projects. And um, I wasn't even, uh, you know, prepared for it. Like I didn't do any acting school or anything like that. And um, after a few projects as an actor, Afterwards, as a dancer, I also did some um, dancing gigs. And uh, after that, I went into filmmaking. I discovered that I really want to tell stories. And I think that's the, um, the essence of everything that I do right now. It's me sharing the stories that I value the most or insights that I get from life or experiences that I feel that have helped me grow as a person. And uh, my dream is to kind of share that with the world so they can maybe get a bit of candy from it and maybe help them on their journey so yeah I, um, after filmmaking i went on to make music as well um i went into the art of collage which is something that i do almost daily now it's kind of the art form that i practice most regularly in filmmaking i have bits and pieces right now i'm working on my first feature film i'm also working on a theater play right now and um, actually the piece that um, I have brought to this platform is kind of a mixture between visual art, collage, performance, and uh, music. So um, there's a bit more of me expressing different sides to my creative uh, processes, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and, and I, I can definitely see how all of those different pieces have come together into this piece which is itself a bit of a almost video collage that in that includes you as an actor you as doing a little bit of dance you're doing uh the filming of it and it also is a piece that that is uh very interesting artistically it evolves over time and keeps the user engaged it um now, with this work, you're sort of touching on some interesting ideas. You're touching on almost the idea of, uh, which is a very hot topic right now, of, of the separation and the loneliness, as well as the interesting uh, ability to do introspective work and things for uh, folks when they are separated from each other and the uh, complex emotions that go around when you have uh, when you have that time without human interaction with others. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, after going through this uh, crazy pandemic and people being kind of, you know, forced to be by themselves, which um, I myself found it as a, as a blessing, to be honest, because 
you see, we tend to get stuck into the mundane, which is something obviously useful because, you know, we have to pay our bills and all that. But sometimes we tend to neglect the other side of life, which is our relationship to ourselves or to a divinity or to the universe or something deeper than the ordinary everyday situations. And I think this video was inspired by this exact feeling um, that came to me over and over throughout the years of uh, who am I exactly? Like, this is one of the questions that people end up, you know, asking themselves, who am I? What am I here to do? And um, for me, it was kind of like, wait a second, if I don't have any people around me to mirror back my behavior or my ideas or my talents or whatever it might be, who am I? You know what I mean? And uh, this character that I'm playing in this video is stuck into this loop of, you know, going to sleep, going to work, going back to sleep, but then waking up, going to work. And then eventually something is revealed and that is the world. And it's kind of like looking at the world for the first time with a feeling of gratefulness, like the feeling of being part of it, even though I might feel, you know, separated, I might feel that I'm distant. Because we can be surrounded by friends and still feel, you know, lonely. We can be in the middle of the biggest party and feel like we're completely alone. So loneliness is not something that is related to the outer world, but something that is inside of us. Our own relationships to, you know, our, our soul, if you want, our spirit. And um, I think that this video, or I hope that this video can be a reminder for people to take at least, you know, like at least 15 minutes a day to just be with yourself. It could be breathing, it could be meditating, it could be reading a beautiful book, but something that you deeply enjoy, not something that you look for an outcome, not something that you want to impress others with, but something that is completely your own with yourself, people might not even know about it. And this is something that I feel that humanity needs right now, because if you're not in touch with yourself, how can you be in touch with the world around you? How can you be in touch with, you know, friends, uh, politics, economy, all these things are concepts that start to make more sense the moment you make sense for your own self. And I think that, yeah, that's, that's the beauty of art. You, you can express things that words sometimes cannot contain. Even though they sound right, it's still not enough to define that complex package of emotions. Because sometimes you might be as happy and as sad at the same time. You can be frustrated, but also relieved. So when things start to mix up in this situation, I think art kind of jumps in and takes control of the concept and brings it somewhere where, you know, every single person can kind of take out what they need. And this is what I hope with this uh, video as well. Yeah, it's it's really interesting thought uh, how a lot in the modern era uh, with the way that people interact and the, the way that you have consumption of media and, and uh, the spending time with oneself does really serve to inform you of and, and give yourself a, a mooring, a, almost put, put a plant down on who you are and what your thoughts are and what your morality is and what your uh, concept of the world is. And it's interesting, as you're saying, that I'm wondering if the lack of doing that leads one to instead be kind of bandied about and pushed around by the things that they consume, either the people that you spend time with or the schooling or the media or uh, that you undertake or you're surfing online or common uh, or, or, or chat rooms or different things like that where if you don't spend the time to really know yourself, then yourself is filled in by others in your concept. And if spending a couple of minutes by yourself thinking and reflecting and, and even just doing nothing and being at peace would help to uh, further flesh yourself out in a way that you control, that you have your own stamp on. Mm. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. And I think it's kind of like, if, if you think about it, we need to sleep, right? So we need some sort of rest because otherwise we cannot function. But um, that's something that becomes unconscious. It's not something that you are aware of in, uh, you know, like a concrete manner. So imagine that all of this that we're talking about this moment for yourself is kind of like being 
in that kind of space of sleeping, but also being aware. So sleeping in the sense that your body can start being relaxed. So that means that there's no more stress, cortisol, whatever, all the chemicals that our body can produce in different situations. So you balance your chemistry, you uh, clear up your mind of all the clutter, of all the emotions, ideas that have no place to fit in. And uh, since I've been studying the human imaginations for quite a few years now, and um, I find that, you know, that's what we, the dragon that we need to tame uh, in the sense that we are all creative beings, but sometimes creativity, if it's not understood and if it's not practiced and disciplined, it can create horror stories. And, you know, there's this saying that the human mind is the garden of Eden in the sense that it's up to me to be a good gardener and to take care of all the plants that are going on there and to make sure that the soil is fertile and that it's nourished with love and all the great things that humanity is capable of but if we don't put in the work then creativity starts working against us and it starts creating bad scenarios and uh, you know fears and anxieties and that's not even if you think about it in the pragmatic sense that's not even real those are pictures in your mind so that's why imagination is so powerful that's the space where we can interact with our memories with our plans with our dreams and hopes even the basic ideas of, you know, tying your shoelace or uh, combing your hair, you still need to know that process before you put it into action. So that means that I need this space in order for me to be aware of what I'm doing. And it's supposed to be that uh, the word imagination comes from imaginari in Latin, which meant to picture oneself. That was the original definition, which has two kind of symbols. On one side, it means that I picture who I think I am but also the idea of me feeding pictures to myself. And, um, you know, in Romanian, at least, the, the definition of reality is kind of the, the matter that exists separated and independent from human consciousness. That's the definition in the dictionary. So if you think about it, reality doesn't really have a meaning. Situations don't really have a meaning, but the one that we give it. So reality starts becoming the way we react to our life. And coming back to the video, that's again, kind of like a nice little nuance of what I'm trying to portray. This idea that eventually when you stop, and I don't want to give too many details because I want people to be surprised by it, but when you stop and just, and you are, that's it. Like this, um, you know, uh, spiritual teacher Muji, his name is, he says like, be like two floating guys with nothing behind them. If you manage to have this kind of experience, even for just a brief moment, the rest of your experiences become something completely different than what you used to. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I, and I like uh, the thought that people will get to experience this as an unfolding experience over time where the uh, piece is not static and uh, it will be different from time to time. And uh, without getting into too much of the detail again, want to let people enjoy it on their own. But uh, um, it's a really interesting and innovative thing. And I really like how that is making excellent use of this new technological era to create something that couldn't have been done before, that is really exciting and interesting and pushes the boundaries and uh, cuts to the core of a, of a really essential and pertinent uh human emotion of, at the time and, and and experience of the time so mm -hmm. i appreciate uh you bringing this to us and it's really great having this conversation and getting a little bit of added color and seeing uh um and seeing what you come up with for us here so thank you again for joining us for the conversation and uh andre's piece is uh available exclusively at 343 all for around the price of a movie ticket. So if you want to get your own certified limited edition copy, drop by, download the app and check it out. And uh, as always, drop a like and a follow for more conversations with artists like these that are really incredible and doing interesting and fascinating things. So Andre, again, thanks for joining us. This was really terrific. Same here. Thank you, John. I look forward to talking again soon.